to have a critically spinning black hole, you need a lot of angular momentum. So it's, it's There are two ways to find out whether black holes really form when stars blow up. One is to wait for a supernova to go off in our galaxy and use every tool of modern astronomy to pick it apart. A galactic supernova would, would us provide us so much information we wouldn't sleep for weeks. But unfortunately, it happens only maybe once or twice per century. So Christian and his team are trying a different approach, blowing up stars inside powerful supercomputers. This is no easy task. In fact, no one has pulled it off. But Christian is on his way to being the first. So simulating supernovae, stellar collapse, and black hole formation is so hard because it brings together a lot of physics. It's general relativity for gravity. It's fluid dynamics for the gas that collapses. It's particle physics doing these simulations, like trying to do a really good weather forecast. So far, Christian has failed to make a virtual star explode in a way that looks like a real supernova. But after years of refining the physics and the math, he now thinks he may be the first to fully understand how a black hole is born. Wow, that, that, that is a event horizon right there. Yeah, this nice black hole in the center. Wow, that's the first time that we do see this. What's surprising is that the most promising simulations don't actually explode. They simply collapse. It's not a bang, but a whimper. Its name, not supernova, but unnova. It's basically just everything eventually sinks into a black hole and the star slowly but surely just disappears. It could be true that most stars or a large fraction of stars just disappear. We, we don't have any data on that. We have never seen an unnova. If Christian is right and black holes form silently, then these cosmic cannibals could be hidden in plain sight all around us. And we might never know it. Finding black holes is terribly, terribly difficult. Even if it wasn't plaque and would be radiating energy, it would still be only, let's say, 20 miles across. And even, you know, at, a, at 10 light years away, it would be impossible to find, even with the best telescopes we have. But if black holes are almost completely elusive, no one told this man. He spent the past 30 years hunting one, a giant one, right at the heart of our own Milky Way galaxy. And his discovery will overturn all our ideas about how the universe really works. Through the Wormhole with Morgan Freeman is brought to you by Lexus. This is the pursuit of the impossible. This is the pursuit of perfection. In 1931, a Bell Telephone researcher, Carl Jansky, was testing a new system for sending radio messages across the Atlantic to Europe. He was plagued by background noise. After two years of careful work, Jansky stripped out most of the interference. But one strange signal never went away. It was loudest whenever his antenna was pointed at the constellation Sagittarius, at the very heart of the Milky Way. It was a signal unlike anything a star would make. Astronomers began to wonder whether it might come from an object theorists had predicted, but never detected. A black hole. But there was no way to find out. The center of our galaxy is hidden from view by a thick veil of dust. Then, 25 years ago, a German astronomer, Reinhard Genzel, found a way to see through the fog. The problem is, we are sitting in the Milky Way, and the galactic center is sort of just along the way through the entire plane of this big spiral galaxy we are sitting in, and there's all this gunk, this dust and this gas between us and the galactic centers. You can't see it in the visible. But at longer wavelengths, this dust is not as efficient. Infrared light with its longer wavelength is perfect for penetrating the veil. But it's terrible at getting through the water vapor in Earth's atmosphere. So Reinhard Ginzel headed for the highest, driest place on Earth, the Atacama Desert of Chile. 
Beginning in 1992, he and his team at the Max Planck Institute began what would become an enduring campaign to find out exactly what was causing the strange noise at the center of the Milky Way. In fact, we found in the center of the Milky Way a very dense collection of stars. That's the very center of the Milky Way around which, you know, everything turns. And then came the first suspicions. Maybe, maybe there is something there. Reinhardt had a hunch that a black hole could be acting as a colossal center of gravity, causing dozens of stars to whirl around it. So he settled in for the long haul. Each year, he took another set of pictures plotting the movement of that cluster of stars at our galaxy's heart. He gathered a large team to help him handle the immense amounts of data and used a new technique called adaptive optics to make the images of these distant stars sharper. So if you look at uh, what the galactic center would look like in a normal telescope, let's say, you would get images which look like that. The effect of this adaptive optics you can see on the right-hand side, it's, it's just amazing how beautiful that image gets. It's, it's really the same scenery. You can recognize those two stars here on the left-hand side and the blurred image there, these two stars on the right-hand side. As the years went by, a striking pattern emerged. Stars were moving, moving really fast. This was something that no astronomer had ever seen before. A dozen, then 20, then 30 stars, all swirling at breakneck speed around a central object that was completely dark and tremendously dense. Could this be the first proof that black holes existed? And if so, was there really one here? Right in the center of our own galaxy? What do you do in order to see something or prove the existence of something which you can't really see, right? And the black hole, you would think, is something, well, by definition, light can't escape from. But you have gravity. Think of the solar system, okay? You have the sun in the center, and then you have the planets. The outer planets move very slowly around the sun. And the closer you come to the sun, the faster the planets go. So suppose in your mind you switch off the sun, you would have to conclude that there is a central object with one solar mass around which the planets orbit. See, that's what we're doing. So these are the stars of the show. Here at the very center here is the radio source, which we suspect is the location of the black hole. This is our best star, which we have followed uh, for 15 years to trace a full orbit. This star, known only by the name S2, was moving at a phenomenal rate. At its closest approach to the dark central object, Reinhardt and his team clocked it moving at 11 million miles per hour. What we learned from this is that indeed there's only one central mass right there at the position of the, the radio source, and that has four million solar masses. There cannot really be any believable configuration which we know of other than the black hole. Reinhard Genzel had made the first definitive discovery of a black hole. But more than that, his team had found an object that must have swallowed millions of stars over its lifetime. Astronomers call it a supermassive black hole. But despite the enormity of this discovery, it would be just the first of many increasingly bizarre and disturbing findings. The next was to figure out what goes on inside a black hole. What happens to stars, planets, even people, if they get too close to this cosmic sinkhole? No telescope can ever see inside black holes. To understand how they twist reality, we have to stop looking and learn how to